G'day, bonjour, bonjour, welcome back to the channel. I think it's finally time that I give you an update on my baby Australian lungfish. I've got these fish on the 17th of March, 2024, and it's been just over two months. I originally did want to bring you this video literally a week after I got them and then do a lot more frequent updates. However, I had to travel overseas, then catch up on uni, and then I got sick, and then planning for the new fish room, which is just a couple of weeks away. Things were adding up and the videos have been pretty infrequent, but things are finally settling down now and I think I can bring you videos on a much more regular schedule, which is something that I've been very much looking forward to. Let's start off by looking at the aquarium that these baby lungfish are in because it's new. You haven't really seen me in this view of the fish room ever. So I'll give you an update on this aquarium and then the fish themselves. So if you saw the video two months ago of when I originally got my baby Australian lungfish, they were actually in my four foot shallow aquarium. I didn't release them directly into the tank, but I did make a little grow out pen sort of thing that was in the aquarium itself, which was basically just a laundry basket that I had locked into one of the corners and I had the lungfish in there for easy monitoring, easy feeding and those sorts of things. At that period of time, I was starting to consolidate some of the aquariums I had and I was finally able to reshuffle this side of the fish room and that's where I was able to set up this tank, which is a lot more of a permanent grow out system, permanent for a month before we move into the new fish room. So this is a 60 centimeter long, 30 centimeter wide and 30 centimeter tall tank or two feet by one feet by one feet. And it's about 20 gallons approximately or 70 Australian liters, metric liters, the proper measuring system unit. <laughs> but this is the tank that they're in. And it's very, very simple, very um, easy to put together. There's a small internal filter in there that houses all of the biological filtration. So there's a whole bunch of small ceramic rings that I've pulled out from my other aquarium. So they were pretty much bang on, ready to go fully cycled. There's a heater in there set to 26 degrees Celsius. And also a sponge filter just to capture any of those small particulates and just to add some additional filtration. I only added the sponge filter in there about two days ago because I was seeing a whole bunch of little floaties throughout the water column. Lungfish are a very messy fish and having the additional filtration doesn't really hurt. So I chucked that in there and that's bubbling away. Aside from that, it's a very simple aquascape if you want to call it that. I wouldn't really call it anything fancy. A very thin layer of sand. There's also just a piece of driftwood which provides some shade and some cover for these fish because they do get spooked pretty easily, but I'll get to that a little bit later. And there's also some plants in there. That is milfoil, I believe, a very simple pond plant almost. Um, it can be planted. I've just got it floating and there's roots on it already. So it just floats around the aquarium, but again, provides a bit more shade, a bit more cover, and also acts as some additional nitrate removal, which you can never complain about. But let's actually have a closer look at the fish. Now we can talk about the stars of the show being the two baby Australian lungfish in this aquarium. I say baby because they really are tiny. They're about seven centimeters and they're about half the size of when I got Neo, my first Australian lungfish. Uh, these two are Sarah and Totus, or Toady. I prefer calling him Toady more than Totus. And their names come from the actual Latin name for Australian lungfish, which is Neo Sarah Totus Forsteri. Uh, so you can see where I got Neo, Sarah, Totus from, uh, and they're both in this aquarium growing out really well. Now, Australian lungfish are an incredibly skittish fish, and I've started to realise that again after getting these two. Neo is no longer skittish anymore. When I originally got him, he would freak out anytime the lights turned on, anytime someone walked past the tank, and that's what these guys are doing. And I've realised that I probably have to go through this pain for about another year or so, until they really start putting on sides. Neo now is over a foot long, so he's very, very comfortable. He knows his environment, he knows the lighting schedule, he knows who I am, when I feed, all of those sorts of things. These two little bastards, literally any sound or anything that happens in the tank, and they are just boom. They still are very, very skittish, and they spend a lot of time hiding, which is why I've really prioritized the cover that I have in this tank. Feeding these fish is also it's troublesome in the sense that it gives me a lot of paranoia. I'll admit I haven't really seen them properly eat. Uh, but again, I went through the same experience with Neo. Right now, I give him food. He's on it immediately. I can see him crunching it all. These guys, very, very shy, very secretive, as I've mentioned. So the food goes in. It'll float around. It'll lodge itself in the sand. It'll stay there for like 25 minutes until they finally build up the courage to come up near the food and start biting it. For that reason, I am feeding it a range of different foods. 
There's pallets that go in here, some fresh foods as well, like little pieces of chopped up fish. And I've always got earthworms in this tank as well. Because mama has a worm farm, I've always got little earthworms that are in this aquarium. And I know that they do eat the earthworms because they'll come back like an hour later and just find like earthworms chewed up and just absolutely mangled the poor things. But they are a really great food source for these fish because there's a bit of movement. They can pick up that in the water. There's a very obvious scent. Uh, and I'm, it's, you know, it's just a really easy, carefree food to feed. I do also have some other fish in this aquarium as well, and they're purely just some dither fish. So I've only got them in there to provide some activity, to provide some movement, so the lungfish don't always feel super scared. And I really do think that it's made a difference. Originally, I just had my five small Blaheri rainbow that I won from the most recent auction that I went to, which was the last video on this channel that I highly recommend you check out. It was a ton of fun, but I put my small Blaheris in here to grow out and uh, they were small fish, they were providing that movement, uh, but after I put in my larger rainbows being my, uh, what are they, my Kalakais and also my Lake Tabera Creek rainbows, no, just Lake Tabera, there's no creek in there, just my Lake Tabera rainbows and my uh, Makalakai rainbows, They've added a lot more size and confidence into this aquarium. Even with the smaller rainbows, right now they're hiding under the driftwood because I'm here. But you can see how the uh, McCullochies are really... Yeah, the, no, not the McCullochies, the Blair eyes are just really out and about. Um, they've got a lot more confidence because they've been in this tank for a lot longer. The other rainbows went in literally about three days ago. But they, when I'm not in front of the tank, they really are swimming around. And... I've started to notice the Australian lungfish being a bit more out and about and a bit more active as well. So it's great to see that. But aside from that, I'm glad I could show you this aquarium. Before we wrap up this video though, let's quickly have a look at Neo, the existing Australian lungfish. So here we are in front of the five foot aquarium. Neo is in the back corner there. I don't know what he's doing, but he's swimming into a plant pot right now. He does very derpy things like this all the time. And it's what makes keeping this fish super fun. There are, however, some really big changes with the way that I'm going to be keeping Neo in the future and just some changes in this aquarium now. Firstly, you'll notice it looks a little bit bare and that's because I've been taking a lot of the heavy aquascape out of this aquarium as we're preparing to move in just under a month. Uh, this tank isn't coming with me and Neo is actually going into an exclusive Australian lungfish display which is six feet long by two and a half feet wide by three feet tall and I will only be keeping near with a lot more peaceful fish moving forward. You'll notice in this aquarium there are things like peacock bass, wild oscars, uh, an assortment of different catfish, a chocolate cichlid, the clown loaches, and everything aside from the clown loaches and some of the catfish pose a bit of a risk to Neo moving forward. The oscars absolutely, as they put on some size, will show a bit more attitude, and that's something that I don't really want moving forward with Neo because I've learned over the past three years that some of those fish that are fine now might not be fine tomorrow. The snakehead gudgeon is a clear example of that. I had three. They were fine for a very long time, a good couple of months. And then they turned on each other. And then they turned on Neo. My plecos, the gibbiceps plecos that I had in this tank, I still have them. They've been moved into a different aquarium. They were fine for like a solid year and a bit. And then they realized they could start rasping on Neo and then they caused quite a fair bit of damage. So I actually had to isolate Neo and keep him in a floating container in this aquarium until he healed up. The plecos are no longer in here. But again, these are all things that I've learned um, moving forward. So I think that I'll only just be keeping him with peaceful aquarium fish. But this is where I want to get your input. Should I be keeping Neo in a big peaceful mixed community aquarium? So I continue to keep my clown loaches get some barbs, tetras, stuff like that in there as well? Or should we be doing just a native Australian lungfish display with a bunch of native Australian nano fish? So uh, Australian rainbows, like what the babies are in with at the moment, or uh, some small gudgeons, perchlets, stuff like that. So just peaceful native Australian or peaceful mixed community. I would love to do both, like just dedicate a native display or have a big mixed community display, but I want to hear what you would prefer to see. So that's where we are with the uh, three Australian lungfish. I am a madman for doing what I have, but I really do love these fish. I know that I won't be getting any more anytime soon. It's just these three fish that I've got for the rest of my life, but I'm very happy that I have them. It's been a great experience keeping them so far. 
I'm glad I could bring you this update and thank you so much for tuning into the channel. If you do have any questions about these Australian lungfish, let me know in the comment section down below. If you wanted to see any particular things uh, in future videos about these fish as well, feel free to let me know and consider giving this video a thumbs up. You have the ability to subscribe as well, but I'll leave that up to you. And bodges and widgies, as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Australian. Bodgie out.